They say I might as well face the truth But I am just too long in the tooth So I'm an O.A. being with me But I'm not yet quite gone to see I may be over the hill now that I have retired Fading away but I'm not yet expired Clapped out, run down, too old to save One foot in the grave there's a rat walking up his garden path now. I could stuff a mattress with your pubic hair. <laughs> what do you do? Pull it out with tweezers? He's stopped by the clothes prop. Now he's turning round and walking back down again, bloody things. Just the same when I make a bed. It's like sleeping with a molting porcupine. <laughs> do you have to stand on top of the ladder to like Nelson's column? Why don't you use the toilet roll as a telescope and be done with it? <laughs> and how do you know it's a he? Your eyesight isn't that good, I know. Hang on, he's coming out again. He's brought the shears with him to trim the honeysuckle. If he so much as snips one of my sweet peas off over that fence, I've got him. Oh, mighty. Seven months of this I've put up with. What happened? Happened. Why can't the two of you just let it rest instead of behaving as though you're both at infant school? I am not behaving as if I'm at infant school. In any case, he started it. <laughs> when a next-door neighbour mows down a hundred of your garden gnomes in cold blood with a machine gun, it's not something you quickly forget. Watch than a couple of feuding cowboys. I've seen you trying to train Mrs Lacey's cat to be sick on his rockery. <laughs> Who did? Demonstrating how to stick a paw down its throat. <laughs> I've never known anyone be so petty. I was not... In any case, which of us keeps leaving those little yellow post-it notes in the back gate every five minutes? If we're talking about petty, what about these? Lawn more too loud. Creosote splash found on lupins. <laughs> For Christ's sake, put some oil in that wheelbarrow. I don't believe you've actually stuck those in a book. <laughs> and don't forget this. Laying a tripwire so I'd fall flat in my face in his wet cement. Oh, for God's sake. I heard him laughing at me through the letterbox, laughing and whispering, gotcha, you bastard, under his bed. Tripwire. That's where he lined the edge of his path with twine. Whew. Talk about paranoid. And anyway, it serves you right for trying to take a shortcut across his grass. If you'd been looking where you were going instead of walking about with your nose stuck in that video magazine... He's lighting a bonfire. Quick, put some washing out, then I can leave him a plate. <laughs> Somebody got the wrong number, evidently. Get that back here. For God's sake, Victor. I've had enough of this. I have, straight. Look. You can take this round to him. It'll give you a chance to apologise to each other and bury the blasted hatchet, the pair of you. Otherwise, I'm leaving home, and I mean it. I'm not tracing around there like some private message boy. If he wants his mail, he can come and get it. There you are. You wanted evidence? There it is. One diseased marigold stalk covered in black fly. Patrick! Smack in the middle of the fly bundle, I found that. Look, there's some it floated there. You always have to think the worst of people. I don't think there's any coincidence, do you, that these things have only started raining down on our garden since last Monday? After the World in Action special on biological warfare? <laughs> Look at the mess you quite willfully made of our front path after I spent three hours getting the bloody thing level. <sighs> you OK? Has it come yet? Just more bills. It's academic anyway, as far as I'm concerned. Do you have to keep writing those things? The man is a cretin, dear, of the highest order. <laughs> I knew it the first time we went round to see him. He made us a cup of tea and then virtually tried to force us at knife point to get into his bed. <laughs> Planet is fraud. That I came through our door by, uh... Oh, right. Thank you. I, um... Yes, Mr. Melvin? You're going to fill this in, then I... No, I thought about leaving it there, like Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> the impressions of glittering neighbours' faces in the concrete, you know? Oh, well... 
It's nice to find you being so reasonable about it all, I must say. Reasonable, Mr. Meldrew? I mean, what is reasonable these days? To find outside one's house, I don't know, a pile of horse manure covered in fairy lights? Who is to say? What's that supposed to mean? I think by anyone's standards, it's not exactly Sleeping Beauty's castle, is it? How long has it been there now? Forty days and forty nights? Three days and three nights, since you ask. Funny, felt longer. And at least it's very clearly signposted, so people don't go accidentally sprawling headfirst into it. Oh, is that what they're there for? I thought it was some sort of jubilee celebration for the fertiliser industry. I don't have to stand here justifying my actions to you. Next time you can pick up your own mail. And another thing, if I find one more of those bloody stupid little yellow notes, I may not be responsible for my actions. <laughs> nice chatting with you, Mr. Melville. Crap. <laughs> the state of British television today can be summed up in two words. Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for that ham and mushroom now. My belief that Paul Daniels and Jeremy Beadle are in fact the same person. Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You notice you never actually see them together. Which one's Mr. Hyde? Which one do you think? <laughs> Just imagine the horror of it if they lost the antidote. They'd have to send in the mob with burning torches. <laughs> this when it's at home. Sorry? Dressing? It's more like an environmental disaster. It never ceases to amaze me the things that people want to watch these days. When was it? Wednesday in the week. I thought I'd see that film about the Cray brothers kill a couple of hours. Good, was it? Yes, very good. If you enjoy seeing people's hands being skewered to the corner pocket of a billiard table, <laughs> very good in the area of people's eyes being gouged out. <laughs> There I am, sitting squirming in my seat. There's this young bimbo behind me cackling her head off. Why didn't you just leave the cinema? Leave the cinema? I was sitting here watching it on the video. <laughs> Said her name was Cheryl. She just called back for the cosmetics catalogue. Let herself in by the back door, if you please, and had been watching it over my shoulder. <laughs> then she had a nerve to ask me to spool back to the bit where the bloke is his mouth sliced open with a sword. <laughs> Said that was one of her favourite bits. And that's the mentality of the people who are trying to sell you pork cleansing fluid. What's that, Rita? Sorry? Since when do I have this monstrosity? <laughs> Sardines and hot chilies with added pineapple. <laughs> Oh, sorry. God, it's like watching one of those crushers on the back of a dust cart. Talking of Jeremy Beagle, I had three more complaints about that horse manure when I was out today. Talk about getting up a petition about it in the post office. It's only a pile of horse manure. It's not going to bite anyone. Said if it's there much longer, they'll have to start putting it on the ordnance survey maps. <laughs> no wonder you upset the neighbours. I don't understand why it had to come here in the first place. Why couldn't he deliver it to the allotment? It's only round the corner. They didn't speak very good English, unfortunately. It only really mastered four words. Horse manure and 20 quid. <laughs> a bit more East European than anything else. No. I didn't like the look of them, walking around dressed like Abraham Lincoln in gumboots. <laughs> you buy horse manure from any old Tom, Dick or Harry, you don't know where it's been. <laughs> don't know where it's been, you know exactly where it's been. <laughs> Up a horse. <laughs> anyway, I'm taking it around to the allotment tomorrow afternoon as soon as I get back from the doctor so the nation can sleep easy in their beds again. Well, before you do, you'd better take Patrick's advice and oil the squeak on that wheelbarrow. Yes. Well, never need to worry about a squeaky salad, that's for sure. Right, thank you. Bye. One Excuse second, me. please. Watson Kettle Cabinet and Partners going to help you. I'm afraid he died last week in his sleep. He did write to everyone. Is it an emergency? Oh, dear. Oh, well, if it's hanging off, I think you best go up to the be on the safe side. Kevin Spivey, the doctor says, a pansky Kevin Spivey. Yes, right. You 
welcome. Bye. It's Sorry, good. sir. Watson Kevel Catholic and Partners. Can I help you? Mr. Scotty to the treatment room. Mr. Scotty, Mrs. Patterson, for Doctor Yip, Mrs. Patterson. Right. Ah. Uh -huh. Is it an emergency? Tomorrow at four. Okay, lovely. Bye. Excuse me, please. Yes, sir. You're Mr. Well, do I just got to. Be... Watson Kevel Catholic and Partners. Can I help you? I'm afraid Doctor Kevel Catholic's on holiday this week. Is it an emergency? I've got a cancellation for Dr. Pondicherry at five. <laughs> yes, you do. The one that looks like Doberman in Sergeant Bill. <laughs> All right, if you'd rather, then. Bye! Look, I just come to pick up a prescription. Victor Meldrew from Dr. Snellgrove. Mr. Chandrasekhar to Dr. Trilling. Mr. Chandrasekhar and Sharon Chumley to the treatment room. Sharon Chumley. Dr. Snellgrove had to go to a wedding. I think we were passing most of our patients to Dr. Watson. Oh, where's he gone? To look for the hand of the Baskervilles? <laughs> I've got Dr. Doolittle instead of Dr. Gentle Goebbels. Oh, yes, I've got a note here, but I don't think he's actually done your prescription yet. I'll just check for you. Now, Zane, did that prescription come through at all for Mr. Meldrew's hemorrhoids? <laughs> She's just checking for you, sir. What's the perfect partners can I help you? <laughs> yes, he's standing right next to me, as a matter of fact. Somebody asking when you're going to shift a pile of manure. <laughs> Is it an emergency? <laughs> Is it me or is it moist? <laughs> oh, did a bit on the humid side today. Did you have a nice weekend? Lovely, thank you. Where did you go to in the end? To hospital. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid Granny took a turn for the worse, so I had to run Mother up there on a sudden mercy dash, which was a uh, little fraught. Her wheelchair accidentally locked into high-speed reverse, and she went on a bit of a mystery tour of the Clement Attlee wing. <laughs> Took us an hour and a half to find her again, and of course by then she'd already gate crashed three hysterectomies, so... It's a bit of a day all in all. So how is your grandmother now? Not giving any cause for concern or anything? Oh, no, no, no. Not now, she's dead. <laughs> well, she was 93, and they reckon it was a broken bone that finally did it. Oh, dear. Didn't know you could die of a broken bone. Well, you can when it's stuck in your windpipe, apparently. <laughs> She's always a great one for gnawing on chicken carcasses and just one of those things, I suppose. Funerals tomorrow. Don't think Mother's looking forward to it very much, are you, Mother? <laughs> Mrs Meldrew said she was very sorry to hear the tragic news. <laughs> How's Mr Meldrew? Getting on all right with his new allotment? Funnily enough, I always think about it when I pass his horse manure in the mornings. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, he seems to be getting quite into it now. Giving him a bit of interest in life at last. I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Sweeney, you'll have to excuse me, only I've got some potatoes on it. Oh, no, don't let them spoil. I, I'm very sorry about your grandmother, and I, I must dash. See you, Mrs. Meldrew. <laughs> Where have you been? Timbuktu? Don't! Oh. An hour of bloody quarter had to wait that bloody blade for a simple repeat prescription. I haven't had a chance to get to the chemists. Do you think you could get it for me when you're out? If I don't move that and you are this afternoon, you'll be lynching me from a lab post. Wonderful, isn't it? The health service is overstretched to breaking point. Three million unemployed. You'd think people would find better things to moan about. Something burning in here. Meldrew, is it? Yes. I won't shake hands. <laughs> Dr. Mervyn Wale. I, uh, I believe you're expecting me. Sorry? I just need to uh, carry out a couple of tests, Mr. Meldrew. <laughs> I'll take a jiffy. In the middle of an allotment. <laughs> Got a couple of ticks, have you? 
I haven't. No, look, they found my prescription in the end. It's part of a copy of Smash Hits on the waiting room table. No, 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 Mr Meldrew. I'm not that sort of doctor. I'm from the Borough Council. Health and Public Safety Department. I thought my office had already contacted you. Don't what? Nothing you need concern yourself about, Mr Meldrew. <laughs> Nothing at all. Now then, uh, this is the manure here, is it? What are you doing? You bought this from a gentleman last week, I gather. Black beard, long black coat, bit of a foreign accent. Yes, what about it? What's the problem? For goodness sake, tell me, what's wrong with my horse manure? Don't be silly, Margaret. I was just doing a stock take on my vitamins. Patrick's at work. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's very convenient. I just uh, thought I ought to make amends. Oh, you don't have to. Mine's as bad. They deserve each other. You'd think two fully grown men would be more tolerant, more forgiving. Would you? No. I suppose you wouldn't really. You swear by all this, do you? Oh, that's Patrick's ginseng. He takes it to reverse the ageing process. Does it work? Well, in that he's acting like a five-year-old. <laughs> of course, he's always had a childish side to his nature, except when he was a child, oddly enough. <laughs> I don't know what to do about him and Victor. I mean, it's one thing to call someone a tosspot to their face, <laughs> but when you go to the lengths of having it iced on the front of a Thornton's Easter egg, well, I think it's got beyond a joke. I mean, he did put a card in the post as well. No name or address on the envelope, just the words, to that cretin in the cap. <laughs> I suppose it helped him to let off steam at the time. Yes. The irony is, we received it. <laughs> About the quickest of letters ever got to us, I think. <laughs> there we are. Get that down your neck. Soothe away all your troubles. Who? Oh. Chamomile, tilia, lemongrass and jasmine. Mind, it's a bit hot. I wonder if Victor could do with any of this to supplement his diet. Well, what sort of things does he eat? Anything. Of any sort or description. In the most hideous and disgusting combinations. <laughs> Food you wouldn't put in the same cupboard he would happily slice up together on his Weetabix. <laughs> It's like watching non-stop junk mail going through a letterbox. I think he lost all sense of taste years ago. Stomach like a bin liner. Mm. This is nice. You get this at the health food shop. Two spoonfuls to calm you down. Three and you sleep like a top. Oh, God, you're well stocked up. Well, need all the vitamins I can get from now on, I'm afraid. Why's that? Tipper! Iron, zinc, magnesium. Patrick's got this vision of the doctor coming out saying, congratulations, it's Metal Mickey. <laughs> You must be thrilled. Congratulations. Well, I'm not sure thrilled is the word. It wasn't exactly planned. I know I'm supposed to be all glowing and maternal, but when you look round at the state of things, I don't think life is something I'd wish on my worst enemy. <laughs> and you never know what you're bringing into the world. I mean, look at the people who started out as babies. <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> Dr Crippin. <laughs> You wait till it's born. It'll be a treasure. You just wonder these days what kind of a start that is in life, to be the child of a bus driver. I did think about packing it in. But then Patrick said he could always work more from home and look after it for me, the way his business has been going lately. You've just got your postnatal depression a bit early. It'll be the most wonderful thing that's ever happened. You won't want to stop. Well, we'll see, I suppose. Have some more tea. No, no, no. Nothing to worry about here, Mr. Meldrew. You can rest assured of that. Will you stop telling me I have nothing to worry about? You're making me extremely worried. What's all this about? Ah, there's no danger of gamma rays or anything like that. <laughs> you can put your mind at rest on that one. <laughs> gamma rays? What? It makes you wonder how these cowboys get hold of the ruddy stuff in the first place, doesn't it? I don't know. Of course, the uh, stables have all been closed down now, just for the time being. They're not certain the contamination levels were significant, but you can't be too careful when you're sitting right next door to a nuclear reactor plant, can you? <laughs> this is just my way of being a precaution, really. Nuclear reactor plant? What contamination levels? Contamination levels of what? By rights, all of this manure should have been seized by the Minister of Agriculture, not driven halfway across the country so any idiot could just buy the... <laughs> what is it? Look at that. Where the hell did that come from? Looks like a piece of fairy light off a Christmas tree. <laughs> What are you trying to tell me? Is it dangerous? Oh, no, no, no. You're talking a mere 4.3 micro-micro-curies. Have I? 
Oh, yes, well below permitted levels. Well below permitted levels. Although still more than normal. But, as I say, there's nothing you should concern yourself about here, Mr Meldrew. Have a Mars bar. <laughs> Mars bar? What kind of advice is that? I'm standing here with a little offering covered in radioactive horseshit. And all you can say is have a Mars bar. <laughs> what am I supposed to do now, for God's sake? Well, if I were you, I'd just forget all about it. Oh, would you? Yeah. I mean, it really isn't at all significant. It's just it's our duty to check up on these things, that's all. I'm absolutely positive it's safe. The radiation levels are absolutely minuscule, Mr Meldrum. Look, you see this digital watch? Yes. I can get you one of these at half price if you're interested. <laughs> I've, got to think. I've got a mate bring something from the continent at cost. There's a ladies' model too, if your wife fancies one. Look, think about it, give me a ring, all right? Well, <sighs> bye then, Mr Meldrew. Oh, for God's sake, stop worrying. You'll end up a complete nervous wreck. That's right. Stop worrying. I'm never going to buy anything from anyone who comes to the door ever again. You said that would happen, didn't I? What? If you cut your nails on a Sunday. <laughs> oh, yes. I distinctly remember you saying, watch out, someone's going to palm you off with a hundred of radioactive horse droppings from a sizable B riding academy. I mean, it happens every day. I said you'd have bad luck. <coughs> when do I have good luck? Anyway, you said there was nothing to worry about, so what are you worried about? What am I worried about? That the hairs are going to fall to my gooseberries. <laughs> Lead to do. I'd already fought in three wheelbarrow fools when he arrived. I just don't know why everything you do has to end up as a three-eyed bloody. <laughs> what the bloody hell's this? That is my hairstyling moose when you've quite finished. Be more clearly marked. You'll be more clearly marked in a minute. Us having a baby. Well, really? Why is that so strange? Oh, I didn't think she had room for one. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, don't they use her spare bedroom as an office? She admitted it wasn't exactly planned. Seemed a bit down in the dumps about it at the moment. No, oh, I'm sure that'll pass. Must be a bit of a worry. Can you stop to think about it? What you might be unleashing on the world? Oh, could grow up into anything. Could be one of the Cray brothers. A Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> one more noise to worry about on a Sunday, I suppose. I suppose so. Right. Mm, that's me. You were an accident. Yes, I expect so. <laughs> I brought your glass of water up. Right, thanks. <laughs> said I was an accident. Oh, what about it? Who told you that? Your father told me at our wedding reception. <laughs> said you were a complete and total mistake, the result of a careless oversight on their first night in Skegness. <laughs> no one said anything to me about that before. <laughs> what the sort of thing you tell a child, is it? I mean, once you're born, you're born. Did you say I wasn't planned in any way? No. Apparently you were a complete and total surprise. Your mum was hoping for a new gas cooker. <laughs> In life, I suppose you make do in the end. I suppose, yes. Oh, I can't remember whether I locked the back door. Will you check? Yes, right. No, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Eldrew. I'm... I see you, Patrick. Yes, I expect you will. Well, the saga continues. At least it's nice to know there's never a dull moment living next door to those two. You on the moan again? Still looking on the positive side. That's that mystery cleared up. What is? The mystery of my missing ginseng capsules, remember? I was hunting high and low for them last night. Where were they? Oh, Mr Meldrew had been sticking them up his bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. Yes. 
apparently. I looked in most places. I think it's fair to say I didn't dream of looking there. <laughs> About. I don't know why I'm so surprised, really. I mean, the man seems capable of virtually anything. But how did he get hold of them? Well, how he got hold of them is something I'd rather not contemplate, thank you. Between the thumb and the forefinger, presumably. Beyond that, the whole image is too horrific to even think about. Margaret was fiddling about with them on this table. They must have fallen in her bag. That's right, she said she'd been to the chemist to pick up a prescription. So he must have put... Oh, dear. I mean, what are we supposed to do? Put a statutory notice on the side of every bottle of vitamin pills? Caution, this product should not be shoved up Victor Meldrew's rectum. You're not throwing the rest away. Somehow they've lost their appeal. I can't imagine why. I'll have a word with her. I was going round there anyway. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hello. Pippa, hello. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that didn't improve matters much, did it? Oh, don't worry about it. You just off. In a minute or two. What, we have a few more pennies? What's that? Well, I was down there first thing, remembering how much you liked it, so... Oh, Pippa, thanks so much. How much lay are you? Don't be daft. Remember, it's very relaxing last thing at night. Very good if you suffer with a lot of tossing and turning in your sleep. Victor does the tossing and turning. I suffer. <laughs> like a whirling dervish, the way he wraps those sheets around himself. I'm lying there freezing to death, and next to me there's this Egyptian mummy snoring his head off. <laughs> Human corkscrew. Mm. Anyway, we'll certainly give it a try. How are you feeling today? Any better? Oh, mode comes and goes, you know. Oh, got to look lively myself. See you later, Foggy. Okay. Thanks a lot, Pippa. Bye. Bye. Sweeney. Morning, Mrs. Mulder. Come in. How did it go? Oh, you're looking a bit peaky. Not to be wondered at, I suppose. Were there many there? Uh, not really. Six of us counting the corpse. <laughs> I wanted to thank you for the flowers. We were both deeply touched, Mother especially. Oh, how is she? Uh, well, she spent most of the service crying and blowing her nose. It was a bit like hearing Abide With Me being played on the tuba. And, <laughs> and of course, she started getting her prickly heat, so I've uh, just willed her back indoors, give her a chance to cool down a bit. Would you like a cup of tea? This is herbal, supposed to be very soothing. I won't, thanks. I've got Auntie Min on the back seat and she'll be itching to get back to her slug gun. <laughs> All right. I'm going to miss my bus. Well, are you going to the shop? I can drop you there. I'm going right past. Are you sure? That would save my life. I won't be tickled. I'll just get my purse. Morning, Mr. Mulder. Oh. Morning, how are you? You're all right. Uh, just the worry of mother, I suppose. Always knocks you for six, doesn't it? Death in the family. Ooh. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about this. When did this happen? Sorry? When did she die? Oh, on Sunday, half past six, at the hospital. I didn't know she'd been taken up there. Who? Your mother. Oh, yeah, yeah. Took her up in the afternoon. No sooner got her up there than we lost her. Yeah. Didn't Mrs. Mulder tell you? She didn't see anything, no. Yeah. It's all been a pretty gruelling experience. I've just got back with her from the crematorium, actually. And... <laughs> really? Yeah. I was telling Mrs. Mulder she's still a bit on the hot side, unfortunately. <laughs> Is she? Yes. Yes. Take a while to cool down, I expect. I expect, yes. I said I'd give your wife a lift in. It's on my way. You couldn't do me a favour while I'm gone and keep an eye on Mother for me. I mean, it's just the thought of leaving her on her own. Do you know what I mean, if you don't mind? No. No, wait. Can you take you off? Well, come in, Mrs. Meldrew. I uh, will see you later then, and thanks very much. I appreciate it. Right then.
witch. Won't you? And it's Sarah's leaving due at lunchtime, so I don't suppose I'll get the chance. This is an interesting one, unless I'm very much mistaken. She just came out of the house and unraveled six toilet rolls into a cast iron skillet. And he scratched them all up and set fire to them. Patrick, will you come away from that bloody window? Now he's sprinkling his own cooking oil all over them to make them burn. I don't believe this. No, he's mashing up all the ashes with the end of a rolling pin, like a mortar and pestle. Yes, I dare say he is. Where are the car keys? Yes, I dare say he is. What sort of remark is that? Oh, talk about being alien fixated. My God. You say he's normal. I never said he was normal. You're not telling me these are the actions of a sane human being. The man must be shot away to buggery, if you ask me. Did you hear me? You're getting the chops. Yes, I heard you. Right. I'll see you tonight, then. Mad as a bloody March hare. <laughs> I wonder if we get him certified on Booper. <laughs> Where have you been? Your meal's nearly ready. I suddenly realised it was the last day to pay the video rental. It's a queue a mile long up there. I get all the way back to the car, find out she'd tapped in the wrong amount. I had to go traipsing all the way back again. Where is it? Has he taken it? Has who taken what? Evidently. <laughs> Can you imagine bringing something like that into someone else's house? <laughs> I suppose you'll notice the difference. What are you rabbiting about? Do you want toasted buns with this or use up the stale? Use up the still and be fine for toast. Ah, do my ears deceive me? Or is that the rumble of the Tuesday night paper shredder chattering into life? <laughs> ah, yes, here it comes. <laughs> All the local news straight off the presses. <laughs> I don't know why they don't just print it on confetti and be done with it. <laughs> Where is it? Your problems answered by Mimsy Berkowitz. <laughs> Dear Mimsy, I wonder if I am unusual in only having one eyebrow. It stretches over both my eyes and the top of my nose, giving me the appearance of someone with a nine-inch caterpillar crawling out of my face. I don't believe some of these. <laughs> Listen to this one. Dear wife at her wit's end, please stop worrying. I can assure you it is not possible to catch a venereal disease from underpants bought at a jumble sale. <laughs> Yes, right. <coughs> oh, I don't believe it. Look at this. Look at this headline. Gardeners reel at doomsday dung horror. <laughs> Dozens of elderly gardeners were today being treated for shock after learning that quantities of radioactive horse manure had been dumped on an allotment close to the area where they work. And although a local health official said the material had been declared perfectly safe, a wave of panic was already set in amongst local allotment holders, sparking fears of mutant parsnips and giant stampeding earthworms, <laughs> as depicted in the science fiction film Tremors. Said 70-year-old Mr. Horace Tring of Cartoon Terrace, this is Three Mile Island all over again. <laughs> mean oh, meanwhile, the spreader of the doomsday dung, Mr. Victor Meldrew, 61, had this morning gone to ground. Gone to ground and gone to Gateway. <laughs> and was refusing to answer the door to reporters. But neighbours close to his riverbank home confirmed that a manure, the manure wires outside Meldrew's house had been seen to emit a strange, sinister glow in the dark. <laughs> I can't be, do you believe this? They've blown the whole thing out of all bloody proportion. What's that number? I'm going to ring the editor now. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, Mr. Meldrew. What? Uh, ben Kerrick, chairman of the Allotments Association. I'm afraid you've seen, of course, a bit of an upset among some of our members, uh, so I've been instructed to call round here to tell you that steps have been taken. Steps? What's the rest? Look, there's absolutely no risk involved. Everything's been declared totally safe. A man came and checked it over, took samples away for analysis. Yes, sir, I've been led to believe, Mr. Meldrew. There's only one question I want to ask you, and that is, do you or do you not wish to keep that allotment? Of course I want to keep it. Ah, fair enough, then. Otherwise, you see, we would have taken it up to the trip. OK, George. Here we go. Look, it wasn't my fault. There was a bloody press that stirred all this up. The stupid senile. I didn't ask him to claw the bloody lot up and cut it back here again. Mister, will you wrap up? Patrick, what is it? I wondered if one of you could run me up to the hospital. It's been a very bad bus crash. It's all right, love. It's OK. I feel worse than I look. You mean you look worse than you feel? No. Just one of those things. Car shot out in front of me from a side street. I went straight in. It wasn't your fault. Don't blame yourself. Maniac with bollocks and brains. <laughs> I could have ploughed across the traffic and killed 50 people. I don't know, I didn't. Breath test was positive, of course. Isn't it always? Why are people ever going to get it into their skulls? You should be locked away for life. There's simply no excuse. No. No, I don't think you understand, Margaret. My breath test was positive. <laughs> no. Just over uh, three milligrams or something. I mean, I know I was fine, but that's not the point, of course. You're quite right, Margaret. No excuse at all. Lunchtime. One of the office staff was leaving. Had three martinis pushed into my hand. Well, I've paid for it now, haven't I? It's all right. Try not to keep thinking about it. Lost my licence. Lost my job. Lost my baby. Typical, I suppose, really. Should have ended up the same way as it began. Accidents will happen. I wonder why they didn't put that in my birth certificate. Life by misadventure. I just though it summed it all up. I've just been down to check the back door. I found this stuck to the glass outside. Mm. Shall I put it in the book? What book? How's the bedtime drink? Yes, yeah, fine. What is it? It's a special herbal tea. People got it for me at the health food shop. Said, drink all that back and you'll have the best night's sleep ever. <laughs> night then. Night. I might as well face the truth And I am just too long in the tooth I've started to deteriorate And now I've passed my own cell by date Oh, I am no spring chicken, it's true I have to pop my teeth into chew And my old knees have started to knock I've just got too many miles on the clock So I'm a wrinkly, crinkly, set in my ways It's true that my body has seen better days but give me half a chance and I can still misbehave One foot in the grave One foot in the grave 
one foot in a grave.